All right, let's get to it. Today, we're going to talk about how to build, grow, and monetize an online platform. And this can apply to individuals and businesses of all, all levels and sizes. A little bit about myself. I'm 31 years old, and besides business, I love to travel, and I enjoy just getting out in the outdoors. I'm also working on my instrument pilot rating. About my online businesses, I have two separate businesses. One is called DIY Projects with Pete, and the other is thinkentrepreneurship.com. DIY Projects with Pete is an online platform. It's a YouTube channel and a website where I teach and inspire people how to build all sorts of projects, whether it's out of wood, metal, or concrete. And my goal is basically to get people out in the garage to have fun, to bond with their mom or their dad or their kids, and to have a new challenge. Think Entrepreneurship is a website I've had since about 2010, and that's a website that I use to inspire entrepreneurs as well. And it has a podcast with 31 episodes that I created where I've been able to interview and reach all sorts of amazing entrepreneurs. I've interviewed Kevin Harrington, who is one of the investors on Shark Tank, and I've, I've had Fran Parkinson on, who is an NFL Hall of a Famer, who now has a successful business. But I've had a lot of fun, and I've been able to share some of that knowledge with the people who listen to the podcast. In 2011 is when I got started with internet business. I had no idea how to make money online, but I really wanted to. And I came across this website. His name is Pat Flynn. Have any of you ever heard of Pat Flynn with Smart Passive Income? Okay. So he basically teaches people different ways to monetize websites. You can see right now, he's doing $166,000 of revenue per month. Crazy. In 2011, I got my first dollar that I made online. It was through a process called affiliate marketing. Does anybody know what affiliate marketing is? Okay. A lot of software companies will use it because it's just a way to be able to promote your company and to have a salesman on your team that's a content creator. So that first dollar online was actually a $90 check for recommending a hosting service, a web hosting service. In 2011, that came to a total of $832. Fast forward, in 2015 and 2016, it's come into a solid six-figure business. We're going to go into a little bit of the monetization stuff in a little bit. I got started with the DIY Projects with Pete website because I saw a need that needed to be filled. I was putting my projects that I built, like dining tables, uh, concrete tables, and I was sharing with friends and family on Facebook. Turned out people wanted to see some plans and they wanted tutorials and instructions. And I realized, well, I'd love to be able to help all of my friends, you know, build that dining table every weekend, build it, help a different friend. It's not scalable. And so I thought, well, if I document this and, you know, put plans together, I can replicate it and I can really scale this business. So I asked, okay, is this a good idea? My friends and family said, maybe it is. So I gave it a whirl. In 2014, I launched the YouTube channel. I had zero subscribers, just like everybody starts out. By the end of, uh, where currently, I'm at 52,000 subscribers, and it's growing at 6,000 new subscribers every single month. I started my first month with 86 subscribers. Views also continue to climb, and I'm currently just short of 4 million views. 400,000 each month. Here's a, just a quick example showing uh, what a video is like. This is kind of hyper speed here, but um, we're just gonna show you one of the how-to home improvement type videos. This was on Instagram, but it basically just shows the process here in a nutshell. I do a lot of voice overlays on the videos to make them really easy and applicable so that any average DIYer can attempt them. One of my most popular projects and one of my first was this farmhouse dining table. It started out with 35 views the first month. It's now close to a million. All of these projects, like I said, I break everything down step by step to make it as easy as possible for anyone to replicate. Here's an outdoor gas fireplace I put up in April, and it's at 71,000 views. Something that you want to be doing when you're working on your online businesses is leveraging audiences to be able to help grow them more quickly 
and effectively. So one of the things I've done is I've reached out to different uh, platforms like Make Magazine. This was featured in their actual print publication and it kind of got that snowball going for the first time. People were coming to my website and um, at one point I had a thousand some people on my website in, in, at one time, which was crazy. This is another project. This was on the artofmanliness.com and this website um, brought another snowball effect and continued to help grow that even faster. All sorts of projects. Is anybody into cornhole? It's a simple project you can build. So let's get into the nitty gritty. How to build an online platform. When I like to talk about online platforms first, I mention the blog. That, uh, how much, does anybody here have their own blog or manage one for a business? Who has a YouTube channel? Okay, good. Anybody have a podcast? Not so much. Oh, Paul back there. Okay. Um, so these are all platforms that I'd recommend working on if you're looking to build an online business. Why might you want to have an online business? Well, if you're like me, I love to teach and inspire. It's very rewarding to me. And I have so many people that just are posting comments and thank yous every day. And, and that makes me feel like I'm making a difference. You might want to be able to scale and reach people all over the world. You know, while I would love to be able to um, just be in Bozeman and uh, you know, help as many people here as possible, I can reach the world if I'm on the internet. Evergreen content is another big thing. And basically evergreen content means that your content is not going to go outdated. And people are going to continue to search for it for years to come. Much like, say you had a cooking blog and you're showing how to grill a steak, somebody's gonna continue to search for that year after year. And once you've created that original content, it's up there and people can continue to see that information and you can figure out ways to monetize that. One of my good buddies has a website that holds him accountable. We're gonna talk about that in just a little bit. Websites are also great for building credibility and authority and for growing businesses. Here's something I just want to show you that there are actual people um, that you are dealing with when you are creating or when you're doing your YouTube videos and everything. You can, um, I mean, you are making a difference. Here's just a couple people that have seen the videos and uh, have given a little bit of a response. My name is David and I like to DIY because I like to take things that are going to be thrown away, such as pallet wood, and make it into something useful. Thanks again for the giveaway. Say hey, Pete. <laughs> God bless. Uh, hello, I'm Jimmy and I'm from Hong Kong. I really like to know why project is simply because I really enjoy the process of making things um, just like finishes. My son is two years old and I really want to pass on to him the skills needed uh, to build things. And so I like to go into the shop and do DIY projects because I get to pass those skills on to my son and that's probably the best reason. Thanks, Pete. I really appreciate everything you do. Um, you're a wonderful channel, and you're very inspiring, so thank you. All right, so the reason I... <laughs> thank you. The reason I do this is because I know it's making a difference, and if it's helping just one person, that means all the world to me. And you can do this in any industry. This is just the DIY here. Now, I wanted to mention a couple um, local online entrepreneurs who are also building platforms. Now this gal, her name is Jackie, and she has a website all about travel. We got started, um, I taught her kind of some of the basics about monetizing a business about three or four years ago, and now for the last year she's been traveling around the world, she gets paid to do it, and all of her costs are covered. Here's a buddy, uh, his name is John Dumas, he's not from Bozeman, but he runs a website um, and he interviews an entrepreneur every single day. And he shares this with the world. He has millions of downloads. And because he's created such credibility and authority in his niche, he's been able to create all sorts of digital products and services and membership websites. And as you can see, his revenue every month, he shares it, is $219,000. Another friend, uh, Andrew Udarian, he lives here in Bozeman. He's built an online community for six and seven figure store owners. And he puts a conference on together for these people every single year around the country. This year's is in uh, Georgia. 
This is another website. This is the one I was talking about, my good buddy. He's actually here today. And this is called Recovery Elevator. Um, he created this website because he's a recovering alcoholic. He's been sober for two years now. And he has a podcast with 77 episodes. Every Monday, a new one comes out. If a podcast episode did not, he'd be held accountable by his audience, by his members of his membership website, and by everyone who listens to that podcast. So um, it's truly incredible. He's inspiring and helping people around the world. Now let's go into some of the platforms you can build. We're going to talk about the blog first. I like to call the blog your home base. And that's because you can send people to it from all of your other platforms. So from YouTube, you can send people from you know, Facebook, from Twitter, Pinterest, whatever it is, you want them to be able to come back to your home base because you have complete control there. YouTube could shut you down any day, Facebook could close your account, but you own your website. So that's a good thing. You also own your email address. So if you're starting an online platform, one of the first things you want to do is collect emails. Why? Because that's gonna help you build a relationship with your viewers on your website, and you can ultimately use that to help sell product, products and services to them, and to continue to build that relationship. So one of the big things about your blog is that you wanna have a good first impression. Just like when you meet somebody, you wanna have good posture, a, a strong handshake, and a smile on your face. That goes the same with your blog. According to HubSpot.com, somebody will come to your website and they only have five to six seconds that they'll spend before they decide they're leaving ship or they're staying. So make sure it's well designed and easy to navigate. Be their co-pilot. This is my grandpa and my dad, they're also pilots. Um, you gotta have somebody steer you know, the, the viewer in the direction they need to go. For me, I like to recommend having a start here page. This is some place you can tell them about your most popular posts, how to connect on social media platforms, um, you know, how to engage and, and really to become familiar with your website so they can get the most value from it. With a blog, you want to make sure that it's providing as valuable of content as possible. It needs to be epic. And they say that a new blog is actually starting every six seconds. That's a lot of a lot of blogs to be able to try and stand out from. And uh, so how can you provide value, you know? Um, and, and so some things that you wanna make sure that you're doing are you wanna make sure that your website posts are well written, that they're organized and you use bullet points and make them kind of pleasing to the eye. And then you wanna make sure that they're easily shareable. So on the left side, I have a little um, share bar and somebody can just easily click on those and share them to yeah, where, whatever platform I want them to. One way to provide value is to give them, to give away free stuff and to give away things that will help them, you know, build their businesses or for, in my case, I give them free plans so that they can build these projects. A lot of people wonder, you know, why do I give away free plans? I call it a lead magnet. And if you don't know what a lead magnet is, it's basically you providing value and giving someone who visits your website something super valuable in exchange for an email address. And so these plans are actually downloaded over 6,000 times every single month. And so that generates a lot of emails and a great way to be able to keep in contact with all of these folks. YouTube. Who, who mentioned they had a YouTube channel? Okay, just a few in the room. Cool. I'd, I'd highly recommend, you know, for any business, um, whether you're, you work for a business or you're building your own online platform, YouTube is the way to go. It's growing so fast. It's the second biggest search engine. And besides how-tos, there's so many different niches that you can fill. And you can, you can just look on YouTube. Uh, there's so many, like, answers to questions that, um, that need to be answered. So if you have the time and can make some videos, whatever it is, Put them out there. So one of the toughest things I think about people getting into YouTube or video content creation is that maybe they're scared to do it. They don't feel comfortable. I was the same way. I hate my voice when I started. I hated my voice. I didn't like seeing myself on camera. Um, and that's kind of something that's fun. I'll go back to some of my favorite YouTubers and I'll look at their first videos and they were terrible. They really were. But if you look 
at how they progress over the years, it's amazing. And, and it's fun to see the different backgrounds that they might have. Um, I mean, I, I remember starting in my workshop and it just looked like a cluster and now it looks just a lot better. As far as cameras and everything, get started with your smartphone. Don't go out and buy an expensive DSLR, unless you already have one, of course. But work your way up, and then for video editing, you can you know, get started with iMovie, um, Windows Movie Maker, and then you can advance as you progress with that business or with whatever you're trying to uh, create videos for. A big thing about creating content, video platform specific, is that you want to put your personality into that. Put your personality into all the videos, it's what builds the relationship with the other people. You're one-on-one, -on -one, or you're face-to-face -face with um, that person for however long the video is. And uh, so be funny, be yourself, and enjoy doing it. People are going to resonate with you. Um, one, one thing I like to do with videos is I'll, I'll film a project with my grandpa, and we'll build something together. Or for Mother's Day, I did a project with her. And uh, people could relate with that. And there's so many people that are building projects and furthering bonds with family members and friends that um, it just shows that we're, we're all the same. Getting YouTube all set up isn't hard. You just have to have a Google account. The first thing you want to do is set up just a basic banner, a header across the top that looks nice. And then a big thing with every single video is to do keyword research. A lot of you are very familiar with that, I'm sure. But you want to have a good title that's to the point and that's keyword rich. You also want to have a thumbnail that's going to reflect exactly what your video is about. And use, don't, don't try and explain everything that in that video. Don't have a whole bunch of like little pictures and stuff. Don't have a ton of text. Just have you know, five or six words and, and a, a, a nice picture. And you can pick your thumbnail um, and create it in something like Photoshop. Here's the description. Now one of the things that you really want to make sure that you're doing in a description is put the meat and potatoes, the important stuff, in that first paragraph, in, actually in those first couple sentences. And you also want to make sure that you're driving them something somewhere, so you're steering them in the direction you want them to go. For me, I want to steer them to my website. If you have an e-commerce store, maybe you're sales, sending them to a sales page where you can then convert um, and hopefully have them buy a product. Now, a little bit about podcasting. We don't have um, an unlimited amount of time, so I just wanted to touch on it because it's a platform that I've played around with and really enjoy it, but it builds instant credibility and authority. Um, it's also something that, I mean, if you have a dream to talk to anybody in the world, you can get them on your podcast. The reason why is most likely they're trying to promote something themselves. So the reason Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank came on my podcast was because he wanted to promote a seminar that he was putting on. Um, Fran Tarkenton had a business that he wanted to share. Um, and so he was wanting to be, you know, he, people like that would want to be on your podcast. The cool thing about podcasts is it's one-on-one. -on -one. So you are, whenever you're, you know, doing your podcast recording and it's then, you know, broadcasted out to everybody, you're in somebody's earbuds while they're running or maybe the, when they're folding the laundry for 30 minutes. That's a, that's a really cool personal connection. And oftentimes, when I go to conferences, somebody will be like, Pete, I think I, I feel like I know you. And I've never met them, but they've listened to my podcast and they feel like they know me because they've gotten to know my personality and um, what I like to do. It's also a fast-growing industry, and so if you have any questions about podcasting, please ask afterwards. A little bit about social media platforms. There's so many. It seems like there's a new one happening or coming up almost every single day. Um, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, all these. But in my experience, I've had to kind of narrow my focus because I can't be really good at everything. It's just not possible. I don't, you don't, we don't have the time to do it. Um, and so I've focused on uh, Facebook, and I think that that's important no matter what business you're running. Um, Instagram, if you're working with a lot of visuals. Pinterest is another good one, and that's actually my biggest traffic generator. But if you are in the how-to space or maybe you have products and services that you need to show visuals of, I'd highly recommend that. And then YouTube, if, if you're ready to dive into that. 
few things about growth. Like I said, personality is big, but collaborations are just a way that um, are, are something that I, I would cer certainly recommend. And I learned all about collaborations at the VidCon conference in um, Los Angeles, which I, actually Hank and, and uh, John Reed put on, and they're from Missoula. It's a pretty cool conference. Um, but collaborations allow you to leverage other people's audiences and to put your personality in front of them, and then they can get on your channel as well, and it's just a great way to grow efficiently. Something, if you guys have a blog or do, with your business, you're trying to probably get some good search engine optimization, some good SEO juice, and so guest posting is another way to leverage other people's audiences, and then to get that link juice with that uh, specific hyperlink back to your website. Some things I've really noticed too are that the more consistent you are with putting content out on a regular basis, the better off you're going to be by far. People learn to expect when every single new podcast is, like Paul has a podcast that comes up every single Monday, people expect that. Um, YouTube, same way. Um, and, and with your blog, you should have a content schedule as well. So make sure to plan that out each and every year at the start and, and kind of update it throughout. Here's a collaboration I did, and I did it with uh, Recovery Elevator. Um, I found out that a lot of people were benefiting um, who were alcoholics or recovering alcoholics from doing projects. And that's because they had a new outlet and kind of a different focus that they could you know, think about during the recovery process. And I found out woodworking is great for that. Okay, so monetization. This is kind of what I'm, I was looking forward to talking to here about here. But um, we're going to talk about affiliate marketing, um, some ways to advertise on your website, some uh, about sponsors, and then we can kind of talk about some digital products and, and forms of donations you could take. So what is affiliate marketing? It's basically um, a blogger or a content creator who's marketing for another company. So if, if there's a software company out there that wants to promote their, their software, I will do it and get a commission for it. So, I mean, it's really easy to set up. I'll, I'll go into more detail here. Here's an example. I'm providing value on my website because a lot of folks come to it and they think, well, geez, this looks pretty cool. I would like to maybe create my own website. Maybe it's about cooking, maybe knitting, sewing, um, software design, whatever it is. They, they kind of think it's a cool thing to be able to help other people too. So they'll, they'll come to my website and, and if they want to start a website just like me, they might click on that little link. It's hard to see, I know. Um, but if they click on that, it will take them to a sales page for whatever software I'm recommending. In this case, it's a hosting software company. And as a commission for referring them, a lot of times with software, it's awesome, like $90 per sign up for that. So if you think about it, if you have a decent amount of traffic, it can add up pretty quickly. Here's another thing you can do if you're just getting started building your online platform, is you can use Amazon, Amazon Associates account. Does anybody use that? Okay, cool. Um, so I recommend all of the tools in all of my projects, and then if somebody, for or tools or books or whatever it is, if somebody clicks on that link, they'll then go into my uh, tools page, and if they find a tool they like, it takes them to Amazon, it doesn't cost them a dime more if they go through my link, and I get a commission. Anybody can do that, you can set it up very easily. So you can see with the volume of sales, like everybody starts out at one to six, you'll make 4% of that commission. And the more volume you get, the longer you have your website, the you know, more time you put into it, the higher that commission is going to keep going up. Uh, this is hard to see, but it's, it's kind of cool because I woke up the other morning at 8.30 and there was $1,800 worth of sales on Amazon that happened because of my link. So what happens is these people click on the link and a cookie goes on their computer and for 24 hours anything they buy on Amazon is attributed to your account. Here's a, a kind of a fun example here. Back when I was getting started I, I always wanted free products, right? Who doesn't want free products? And I learned um, that these, these companies are seeking out YouTubers because they have loyal audiences and it's just a great way to share the product. So this has 400, 000, 416,000 views right now. It's sold 
since, since it uh, went up, $40,000 worth of products for this company, and I can track all of that through my Amazon link. All you gotta do is go to the Amazon Associates program and sign up, it's pretty, pretty easy. A lot of softwares use brokers to manage their accounts. Some of the big ones are CJ.com and ShareASale. Um, you can get signed up, so, I mean, let's see here. Anything you're interested in, so say you wanna market apparel for major league sports teams, you can get signed up for a program that does that. I mean, it's kind of limitless, there's anything under the sun. Say you like kayaking and you just went down the Gallatin River and you wanna talk about it. You can go to most websites and toward the bottom, there's gonna be a little link that says affiliate partnership and you can get signed up with that and then you can, you know, make a 6% commission or whatever it might be. For YouTube and Google, you make money by having these little advertisements. Do these look familiar? Do you click on the X right away probably? Yeah? So that's how the YouTubers make money, and, but it's not very much. So as you can see, in the last 30 days, with 400,000 views, it's just short of $700. So you really need to have a lot of traffic to be able to make a decent income just using YouTube. And that's why all these YouTubers have affiliate partnerships and sponsors. Here's Google AdSense. This is another thing you can get set up super easily. You don't have to go out and find the advertiser. It's, it's just there, Google hooks you up with it. Um, but with about 150,000 unique visitors, this brings in right around 500 a month, which is a nice addition for sure, um, but if you're gonna make a full-time living off of it, you need to figure out some other uh, ways to be able to monetize. Now, as you grow, you'll, you'll, be, uh, you'll be able to reach out to different companies. These are some of the ones in my niche that I, I work with on a pretty continuous basis, and I reached out to them when I had about 10,000 subscribers. I created a media kit, and this is something I'd highly recommend um, for any blogger, YouTuber, um, anybody building a social media platform. And this just gives, you, gives the uh, advertiser your stats and uh, your social media platform numbers, all of that stuff. And then what I like to do is have some tier levels where they can um, pay different levels to you know, have, uh, like maybe I'll do a blog post and include their name in it. I might just do a video and have a couple uh, uh, mentions in it. So you can kind of work that out with each advertiser. Here's a project that I did for NFL.com, um, and it was teamed up with Glidden Team Colors Paint. Um, and what I worked out was just a deal where I did uh, two posts and two videos for them for a set amount of money. Another way you can uh, monetize your website is asking for donations. So if you've probably seen on a lot of websites, it might say, uh, buy me a cup of coffee. That works. I've tried it. Another thing you can do is give away your lead magnets. I use this um, program, it's called Gumroad. What it does is it instantly delivers products. So as soon as they put in their email, it will send them my plans. And I have the option to donate. And um, right now, it looks like it had uh, about 5,600 sales last 30 days. And that's the donations, it's the $1,000. Another thing you can do is use Patreon. Patreon's a really, really easy way to set up and uh, and, and take donations. So digital products, these are awesome. And I have a couple of them, and they are what can really bring in the revenue. Um, if you're an expert in, say, coding, I mean, I know there's a lot of uh, coders out here, but you can, you can create your own coding school and charge a premium for that. People pay lots of money for expertise, for convenience, for everything in one place, for something that's exclusive, um, for bonus materials, it's, it's just, it's, and, and for a community, and for access to be able to talk with the expert. Here's an example, this is a coding school. They have a monthly revenue um, uh, model here. I just bought this course because I'm creating my own online course. This is $1,200 but he spent his time and I'm paying for it because I know that I'm gonna save a lot of my time or a lot of my time and energy and not screw so much stuff up um, because I'm learning from him and it's totally worth it. 
I'm working on my instrument license. This guy figured out a way how, how to, uh, you know, create a course and teach flying. I, I, I pay a, a monthly fee for this, and it's really, really been helpful. And then these, these little private Facebook communities, if you do have a membership community or, or just a community of any sort, these are great to have. And you know, nowadays it's hard to, to get all your messages out just, just on Facebook because a lot of it get, gets lost unless it's sponsored. Um, private groups, when you're in those, you get notifications for everything that happens. So what do you need to do to be successful with an online platform? You need to provide value and you need to help others. If you have that goal, people will be wanting to support you and help pay you back. So, as Albert Einstein says, try not to become a man of success, but a man of value. So, how can you grow your online platform? I want you to think about that. And brainstorm some ideas, and then make sure you take some action on it. Because I'd love to see these platforms you create and for you to share them with the world and to make a difference and inspire other people. Does anybody have any questions? Rob? So, can you say a uh, comment about companies that seek out YouTubers? How does, like, how does that process work? Rob just asked, how does a company uh, looking for YouTubers seek them out? That's a really good question. A lot of the companies have PR firms that they work with, and those PR firms deal with content creators on a daily basis. There's also websites like FameBit, and uh, that basically is somewhere uh, like a content creator can go and a company can go, and it's kind of a broker. So it, uh, like you could just say, okay, I have this software and I want um, somebody to promote it, and you can say I'll give them $500 for doing a video on it, and then it's kind of a bidding process. So that's one of them. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways. A lot of PR companies will, will be reaching out to content creators, or you can just email me. You know, I mean, somebody, somebody could email the content creator. Good question.